Hello and welcome to episode seven of Punts and Bunts. My name is Jose. I'm here with Robbie and Sean. How are you guys doing? Doing all right over here. How about you there, Sean? Doing well. All right, cool. And then, yeah, we're so, uh, this topic today, we want to jump into uh, all-star voting. I know it's been a common topic among all sports, a lot of sports, all sports, frankly, with uh, electing players also again to fan votes should be allowed based on, you know, people think it's a popularity contest, small market teams not getting represented properly. Uh, what do you, uh, what do you think about that, Jose? What do you think about the idea of fan voting? Honestly, I mean, you know, it, it's one of those things. There's obviously going to be good things and bad things about it. I feel like there should be a, I don't know, like it, it should get, like fans shouldn't, I guess, be in charge of everything. Like there should be some... I don't know if it's like an electoral college type deal, <laughs> which we know how good that works for us, but <laughs> something where, where like the people don't get complete control. So it isn't just a popularity contest and it does, I don't know. It just does more reflect uh, players performances in that first half of the season uh, is if that makes any sense. So, so do you think that it should be based on like a stat, like war, like a stat where wins above replacement? Um, if it's a player has a higher award, do you think they should get the nod to start in the all-star game since that to per almost the purpose of that stat is to determine, you know, wins right. above replacement. Right. And uh, you know, it is easy to just look at a stat like war because that's basically what it's telling you. Um, and I feel like that, that maybe, maybe, I guess, and I'm just coming to this right now, maybe get like the top 10 uh, war players or players with the highest war at each position, like top 10. And then from there, the play, the, the people could decide from there or something like that. So it's not just like a random popular guy playing left field for the American league or something. I don't yeah, know. Like, like, like Jason Hayward starting in right field for the national league. I get that. Right. Uh, so, 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 uh, so Sean, what do you feel about uh, fan voting? Uh, I like it. And uh, kind of the other way of what Jose said, I think if you, they're going to do it and let fans decide, they should lean all the way into it. And like with the pro bowl, set up a, an American idol style text line where they can call a play run pass, you know, let them, I think that would increase viewers Here's my caveat where, where I don't mind these, the all-star game, the pro ball being fan voted. I like that. I like that, you know, and I like the formats where they allow players, they guarantee a player from every team so that it makes investment across the entire league. You're going to get to at least see X guy playing, but I don't like pro bowl and all-star uh, games played being used as a metric for skill. When you see, oh, here's the right tackle for the so-and-so. He's had five Pro Bowls. Irrelevant. That's an irrelevant stat. And that's where I think we need to change focus. I like these games. I think they're fun. I mean, the Pro Bowl's been kind of weak, but I like the idea of it as fun. They should lean into being more fan-involved, you know, calling plays or at least the play style. I like the involvement of fan voting to get players in. I just don't like the usage of, of it as a metric for skill. I don't like when they go, wow, that guy's been to five all-star games. Like it's a, it's a, it's a vote. It's a fan vote. So I like it other than when they use that as like a, a metric to, to say how skilled somebody is. I get the popular guys are typically going to be the good guys, but it's not always going to be the case. It, it is just pure popularity, but I just don't like it being used to to put on somebody's like career page of how many Pro Bowls they've had, how many All Star games they've had. It's it's kind of an irrelevant stat to me. Yeah, I mean, not to cut Robbie off, but uh, to me, I feel like if it is going to be used to that, and I, you know, it is something like Sean just said, it is something that gets said. That guy was a three time All Star. Um, I'm coming from the side of then make it mean something, you know, fans haven't always been the ones that voted them in. And, you know, it, I, th I think, and that it should mean something. Uh, 
but like I do the game, uh, the game itself should mean something like like baseball that, used to mean home field advantage or you're just saying the 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 accolade of being an all the accolade of being an all-star okay. if it's going to be used or if it's going to be referred back to in the way that it is like Sean is saying like oh four pro bowls or whatever it is then you know make it mean something make it not be a, just a popularity contest to make it there they have to go one way or another. Either you have to right. lean into it and make it a skill-based right. selection or lean into the fan side and stop using it to exactly. put on somebody's Hall of Fame resume. Exactly. Yep. And now right. I can say also, kind of to touch on one of Sean's points, um, that in a lot of cases, I think the fans do get it at least close to right. I right. mean, it's it, you almost always see, granted, they're the popular players, but why are they the popular players? Because they're freaking good at baseball. Um, so, but like, then you also have like, like the 2016 Cubs, they were clear and cut the best team in baseball. They had like six all-star starters that year. Um, and it just looked like the Cubs were playing the American league. Right. Um, so uh, Chris Bryant with that home run in the first inning off sale. Yep. Yep. In the left field at Petco park. Yep. Yep. So that got uh, me turned up, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I personally, I like fan voting, but I also do like the idea of having some sort of committee or a manager's election. Like, you know, think about how the Hall of Fame, you get elected to the Hall of Fame, you have your your different committees that select, um, that vote on who should get elected to the Hall of Fame. Uh, well, why not have like a manager selection? Um, you, you should have like a fan vote, you could have a manager vote, and then you could have like a statistic vote, a vote or not vote, but a, a statistical um, all-star. So you could have like different kinds of ways to go about it and i mean in reality in baseball i know it's a little bit gets a little more fun for the fans and the players if you're elected an all-star starter but you're playing like two or three innings it's it's like it's a spring training game it's an exhibition it doesn't mean home field advantage in the world series anymore which i didn't like them eliminating at the time but now with the implementation of the widespread dh it really doesn't make nearly as big of a difference as it used to right Um, unless you're playing you know October baseball in Minnesota, but they got to win a playoff game first. Um, <laughs> so, um, cause it'd be, yeah, if you get like say LA and then they're playing in, and it's October and then they're playing in um, Minnesota, that's, that's quite a temperature difference too. Like Chicago to Cleveland, that's not, it wasn't that much different. They both get that lake effect weather off Lake Erie and Lake Michigan. Um, the temperatures were about the same. Uh, so it's just, it, it, it yeah. <laughs> uh, so what do you think like i i think sorry to cut you off i was like no no no, no. I lose this no you're good, you're good. like with the pro bowl i know there's been like talk of replacing it because they've been like you know, years before and kind of again they do like the skills competitions they play dodgeball and do obstacle courses and do you know points per pass and the little hoops mm-hmm. you know i think if they're gonna like for the pro bowl at end of it because that's like at least baseball for a while had some meaning to it with the home field advantage for the world series. The pro bowl has, has, as far as I'm aware, always been just a pure fan service game. There's nothing attached to it. Half the time, the best players who are in the playoffs or the super bowl aren't going to play in it because they're either coming off of a playoff loss or beat up from one, or they're going to the super bowl in which they're never going to play a meaningless game and risk injury. And you actually have seen in the past couple of years, some notable players in the pro bowl, getting injuries. I can't remember his name, but there was a tight end who was it? I can't remember his name, but he, I think he messed up his ankle and and I don't know that he ever really returned to be quite the same. And it was for the pro bowl. So I have seen like people lobbying for the pro bowl just to be dissolved into just pure skills competitions. They're more fun to watch. And in my opinion, I think that would be just fine. I think that'd be more entertaining. You'd have more people involved and interested in watching than a game of two hand touch where nothing really matters. Well, yeah, I mean, and the thing is, you've seen a lot of other sports where they try to, to make modifications to make it more fun. Um, the one thing about baseball is just the nature of the game being the the non-contact sport that it is. Uh, players are still going to give their all. Like, you're still going to see Max Scherzer go in there and try and strike out a player like Francisco Lindor, um, which wouldn't work anymore because they're on the same team. Um, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Um but uh, like just you, you'll, see, you'll get that all-star pitcher and then that all-star hitter. You know he's still going to want to try and strike him out. Um, baseball's not this bad boy game it used to be. You're not going to see Pete Rose plowing Ray Fossey over at home plate anymore. All these guys are friends. All these guys like to talk and, and chat. And like you see what guy gets on first base, they're, they're having a whole conversation in a matter of two minutes. Um, 
basketball, you know, they don't play much defense to try and avoid injury. Uh, you see those scores get well up into the 150s. NHL had a really cool modification to where they did 3v3 hockey tournament. And it's so fast paced and it, the, it honestly turned fans back into it rather than seeing, you know, the, the typical 12 to 11 final score of a hockey game, which should never happen. Um, so I, yeah, I, I think uh, I kind of lost my train of thought there, but. Um... <laughs> well, I'll give you guys something to think about. What about if we're going to say that it should be just uh, something that's for fun, you know, just celebration of the game. How would you guys feel if this year in particular, guys like Albert Pujols and Yadier Molina, I mean, look at us right here with our Cubs stuff, but if they got like an honorary, just special, wouldn't even have to play or anything, but just to be there and get like a, a ovation for the careers that they've had, would you guys be against that? If, so- if it was going to be like that and even if it's not going to be like that would you guys be against it happening like this year like giving pool holes an honorary all-star game last appearance to you know tip his cap and be done bring bring it back to the point about the the accolade i think that would even make the accolade more meaningless um and on top of that uh i don't care for the whole farewell tour thing Mm -hmm. i mean i never really did like you go you go to these games like I went, I went I went to a Sox game when Derek Jeter was playing there during his farewell tour and re two um, pack <laughs> and <laughs> and uh he uh like and it was it was cool but like I mean it just got old it was the eighth inning the Yankees were losing and you had just fans just t- chanting Derek Jeter and getting irritated when he wasn't tipping his cap it's like he's trying to win a ball game he's still trying to play the game uh, it's just, and people are just like, I don't know if it was just, you know, Sox fans or what, <laughs> but you had, uh, like just people like saying, Oh, why isn't he tipping his cap? What a jerk. And blah. It's like, well, <laughs> it's like really like he, he, he's trying to play a game. He's still a competitor. He's still an athlete. I mean, his career's not done, um, yet. So I, I mean, yeah, I think the whole farewell tour thing is a little overblown and I mean, you're, you're going to, you, you haven't really seen it much with, with Albert, um, which to Manny Machado's point was kind of uh, unfortunate. Um, but like, you know, you're going to see it with Miguel Cabrera at some point. Um, and it's just cause he's been, I mean, there's not many people in the game who don't like uh, Miggy, but I, I, I would back to your point, Jose, I do. I, I don't think I'd really want to see um, an honorary all-star if it counts towards his accolades. Now, if he just shows up, and, right. Like, yeah. like an invitation, and... he's not playing in the game. It doesn't go on God. his, but he's there, you know, last all-star game that where he's still technically a player or they're still technically players to say peace out. I mean, I wouldn't see a necessarily problem with that as long as like, like I said, it doesn't count towards their accolades. So, but, <laughs> but, but back to, but back to my other point is I'm not a big fan of the whole, the whole right. farewell tour. And so it's kind of just, it's just giving it more of a farewell tour. Right. So, um, so, but that's just my opinion on that. Awesome. Well, if we don't have anything else, we'd like to continue Robbie's fun facts. Still haven't thought of a different name for it, but uh, <laughs> over to you, Robbie. Robbie's uh, fun fact. So uh, now going back just a few weeks here uh, was uh, June 19th, uh, you know, Father's Day for uh, many of you fathers out there. And uh, that was also the uh, anniversary of the first ever Major League Baseball, first ever baseball game played under the modern rules, I should say, um, in 1846 between the New York Knickerbockers and the New York Nine in uh, Hoboken, New Jersey. So the Knickerbockers ended up winning that game 23 to 1. Um, Jeez. And, uh, and that's <laughs> the, the one team that... didn't like the new rules. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> <That's> stupid. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Go back to England and play rounders. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so it's just kind of cool to think that the ultimate modern rules, obviously there's been modifications here and there since, right. but it's just cool to see that, uh, that that's that been being played that long. And, you know, there's some baseball purists out there who's like, I wish we still played baseball like that. But <laughs> they say right. that until they watch a game of it. And then they go, this is not fun to watch. I watched the YouTube video 
not that long ago of some like men's club because that's i mean that's kind of how it was you know it was like men's clubs or whatever that would play the gentlemanly game of baseball with each other and like and they still play by like the 1880 rules or i don't know oh yeah there's there's teams up here there's a whole league that's in oh, my neighbor, really? in my area yeah i yeah. They, they always played at like like three o'clock you know i'm I work oh, okay. nine to five, so I could never go to a game. I always kind of wanted to, yeah. But uh, yeah, I was like uh, like teams like the Quarry Men and uh, stuff like that, and they all right. wore like the old like flannel <laughs> uniforms and <laughs> you know sweating their balls off quite literally. Um, but it's like they can get they can't use gloves, obviously, but like they can catch it on a bounce. They and, can catch it on a bounce, and that's still an out or whatever it is. Um, yeah. Yep, and you and like you have to talk in modern baseball rules or, or lingo as these things. Uh, used to be like oh that was an ace or something like that i don't know <laughs> like it's just uh just some goofy things about that so yeah and who knows maybe in 150 years if baseball's still around it's going to be completely different so maybe uh, you know what it's it's going to be it's going to be a way different game give it five years it's going to be a completely different game we're going to be playing basketball so <laughs> <laughs> All right. And with that, I'd uh, just like to remind everybody to follow us on our socials, Instagram, Twitter, uh, obviously here on YouTube, subscribe, ring the bell, like, uh, and, ding, ding. and yeah, just let people know about us. If you like it, keep watching. Uh, we'll be here. <laughs> All right. See ya. <laughs>